guys. Welcome back. Cody's Auto Diagnostics working on 2006 5.4 F-150. Uh, the customer's complaint is it runs rough. Um, so it's got a P-1000, which means somebody's been in here and cleared, cleared the codes. So that's pretty much no help stuff to us. But a uh, couple things I did notice, I did go into the data stream, picked a couple of the PIDs that I want to see and we'll go over here and customize it. Do these two PIDs for the short term. Uh, let's do long term as well. Okay, so you can see here, short term, 20, negative on both banks. So they are identical to each other. That is going to be his running concern. Okay. Um, actually, let's go back out of this. Come up here and you look at the fuel rail pressure desired, 39. Uh, fuel rail actual, 39. Okay. Um, heated. The oxygen sensor for bank one is switching. Let's get up above 0.8. It's getting pretty close. Anyway, um, if you guys want to see that a little bit more, here is the O2 sensor. It is switching. I did not grab that PID for the other other bank, um, which I should have, but take my word for it they are both switching mass airflow volts uh, I thought I had the mass airflow okay let's go back grams per second okay got it Okay, so let's see, mass airflow, grams per second, it is a 5.4 liter, AC is off, grams per second, 5.7. Um, I am good with that, I am gonna go turn the AC on, because I'm dying right now. Mass, the grams per second did go up, but with no loads on the engine, turn this AC back off. I'm happy with that 5.8. Okay, coming back down. I have the rear trim, rear O2 trim. Uh, that's looking good, but you see those negative numbers, okay? So we will go in here. And look at them. So it's affecting both banks. They are both acting the same. So this is obviously not a vacuum leak. Uh, it is not an injector stuck open because it is affecting uh, both banks. Uh, it could be a possible plugged cat, but if it's a plugged cat, it would it would affect one bank instead of the other. Um, I'm not worried about the valve timing or anything like that, that it's jumped. But one thing that I did notice, all I'm gonna do, Turn the wheel. And if you guys can watch this. And I'm just holding the wheel here. And you can see those short terms getting back to zero, trying to anyway. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's go back. And let's sit here, nice and straight. And we're back down into the negatives. Okay, so again, turn the wheel.
So would you think that the power steering pressure switch would have that much effect on fuel trims? I would say yes. So let's go put this back up here and we will go out. Whoops. Let's see here. Maybe we did catch it. So turn the wheel back and forth. You can see that's 500 PSI. Turning the wheel, goes up to about 750, goes up and down, right? Well, coming over here, right there, oops, not that, right there, drops down to zero. Let's try this again. I am gonna turn the wheel. Slowly, one direction. Power steering pressure rises. I have it all the way at the lock position to the left. So it's gonna be a higher pressure. It's obviously showing like 1300 PSI. Okay, now I'm gonna go the other direction. to the other lock position, the other lock position, okay, again, that's 1300, come back to the center, I would like to see if it would drop out again. So I am just coming in here and I am wiggling. If you guys can see that, but it's bare wires. guys something else you want to pay attention to okay key is on engine is off over here key was on engine was off so it was registering 300 psi well how does it have pressure if the engine's off okay so now I haven't replaced anything yet but now where it rests is at zero psi that's where it should be okay so what's going on is it's thinking that there is pressure when there isn't pressure and then starting the vehicle the pressure is higher than it's supposed to be. So it is, the computer is adjusting the fuel trims accordingly.
All right, guys. So we've got the pressure sensor in. Uh, got the pigtail wired in. The heat shrink with the glue in it. Um, we're ready to fire this thing up. First thing I did notice going into the PID, zero PSI. Okay, engine is off. That's what we want to see. Start it up. And if you can see, the pressure is way lower than it was before. So I didn't even bother looking at what the pressure specs was supposed to be. Um, but I did notice the fuel trims change while turning the wheel. Uh, so I focused my diagnostic um, procedure in that area. Um, so if you look at the short term fuel trims, they're hovering right around zero. Um, you know, they're, let's grab these. Let's, uh, let's throw some long-term in there, too. I'll probably have to uh, drive it to have the long-term compensate to learn. Uh, sometimes it can take a while sitting here idling, uh, but short-term fuel trims hovering around zero plus or minus I mean plus or minus five percent so that's good I'm happy with that now let's double check turn the wheel one direction turn the wheel the other direction And you see the fuel trims change a little bit, but nothing what they were before. I mean, they're, they're negative, negative 20%, so that was huge. Now, let's go back to the pressure reading. Back up. Power steering pressure switch. Go lock to lock. There's lock. Let me grab another pid. Okay, so white is the PSI. So when I go full lock, what was that before? Like 1200 PSI? And it's right at 13. So it was reading correctly that way that way when it was on full lock. Thirteen hundred, okay. Um, but sitting here, steering wheel center, our pressure reading is right at sixty, which it was showing three hundred before. So wires were bare, wires were touching each other, so that five volt reference and that signal wire were, were hitting each other. So doing that, sending, sending the wrong readings back to the computer, which computer thought that there was a the heavier load when there actually wasn't. So this is a fix, it needed a pressure switch. It, a pressure switch just because it was leaking, okay? And a pigtail. Uh, pigtail was the main part of it. Wait a minute, they're both, they're both part of it. It's cause and effect. Uh, pressure sensor leaking caused the wire insulations um, to fall off, caused the wires to go bare. So you want to you want to do both, okay? Cause and effect. Doing just a pigtail, it would be back. This thing has a lot of leaks on it. Um, more than just that pressure sensor that was leaking. So yeah, unless he wants to fix all those other leaks, I'm sure eventually he may have an issue. But this thing also has. 300,000 miles on it so I think by the time more wiring goes bad it, this thing's probably going to be done and over with so 
or at least in the junkyard. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.